Hello and welcome to Academy Live episode 35. We're here today with Andrea Beluso. Hi there. And we are going to talk about hard reflectors, all of them, all hard reflectors. So stick with us and uh, you'll learn a whole bunch of uh, interesting stuff about hard reflectors. Hello and welcome back and welcome Andrea. Thank you very much. Hi Anders. <laughs> hello. Uh, the hello light everybody. The Light Shaper is with us today. Uh, and one of his specialties, I would say, are hard reflectors. Absolutely. Yeah. And I used to, I, to think that I used to hate them. Yeah, I know. And now I adore them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I find that this is going to be an, an excellent uh, opportunity to, uh, to kind of really dive deep into the world of hard reflectors. Yes, absolutely. No one's better to talk about them than you. Well, say. I'm quite passionate about the subject, so I guess that that uh, rubs off somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have you back. It's uh, great to it be was back. a couple of weeks since you were here last time. Yes. Uh, you've been away? I've been away. Yeah. I've been away. Where have you been? I have been uh, in Denmark and I have been in Italy. And in Italy I've been to this wonderful castle. Oh, okay. Yes. And what did you shoot in the castle? I was shooting uh, portraits. These sessions that nowadays I call uh, redefined beauty sessions. Okay. It's almost like a, it's a, almost like a normal portrait session, yeah. but it goes deeper than that because it's actually redefining beauty as it is. Uh -huh. So it's actually making the person's beauty shine through and getting rid of the myth that people can be non-photogenic. Mm, okay. So with these processes, everybody's photogenic. The, I, can, I can totally relate to that. I actually had one of those sessions uh, very recently uh, with the, uh, actually I think it was only like, it feels like it was yesterday, but it was not yesterday, mm. but the day before yesterday. Uh, I, we had uh, Holly Wren was mm -hmm. uh, over uh, here on, over the weekend work doing right. some other work and, and on Monday I forced her to come into the studio and take my mug shot because I, I, I haven't <laughs> had any mug shots done since I think the, the last time when, when, when you were here doing trainings and right. you remember that? Right. That, was remember a, that. Yeah. that was uh, a long time ago. It was a long time so, <laughs> but, but, and, and so, so that was the last time so I had, had the mug shot and on that picture I, I just looked very grim and, <laughs> and I thought I need to have some nicer ones and I really hate being in front of a camera and, yeah. and I you know I can relate to the non photogenic Yeah and these these things these sessions are actually a facilitation of uh, uh, me putting the, the the person in front of the camera into a space of actually not judging themselves mm -hmm. of the photographer not judging themselves because if the photographer judges themselves or the person in front of the camera that actually uh, creates some stuckness in yeah, the picture. It, it does and, I, and I've had sessions uh, when I've sh uh, done portraits where yeah. exactly the same thing yeah. has happened either it's been me or yeah. the, the person yeah. in front and, and it's really good to learn techniques about that but yes. Holly did a great job and she managed cool. to get me to relax and uh, so now I've changed all my profile pictures on every single social <laughs> media. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I like the new ones. I like yeah. the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all thanks to Holly Wren, uh, <laughs> amazing photographer as well so it's always good to ha get yeah. help from your colleagues. Yes. It's kind of hard <laughs> when you do the selfies with the duck lips oh, and no, all they that. Don't work. <laughs> <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> uh, but today we are, uh, if we look at the studio here, this is kind of the setup we have. You see on the far left we have a table with uh, some wook pans, uh, basically the hard <laughs> reflectors. We are so not it's a cooking show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going to cook some food. I got sesame oil and, uh, <laughs> and some duck. <laughs> <laughs> with me here, so we're gonna <laughs> do some deep fry here. No, and 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 these are. I mean, mainly gonna shoot with the uh, Pro 10 and the Pro Head. Mm -hmm. uh, all these reflectors, they do work with yes. the flat fronts as well. They uh, there are some some small there will differences. There some small differences, yes. Yeah, but I think it, it takes. Uh, uh, you need to be a little bit uh, nerdy uh, to to see the difference and really yes. analyzing into deep the I mean, depth. I would say that the main difference that you will notice is that the flat fronts uh, have less of a zoom function. Yeah. And that is uh, quite obvious if you look at them because 
what they do have that the pro heads don't have, they already have a built-in reflector. Mm -hmm. yeah, so exactly. because of that, the flat front was created yeah. so that you could use it right away, right out of the box. Yeah, that's so true. So it's a plus that way. But you know, when you get an advantage, very often, especially with technical stuff, you lose another one. Yeah. So the advantage of the flat fronts is that you already have a built-in reflector, but you have a little bit less of a zoom less function. Less of a zoom function, But yeah. you still have one. Yeah, exactly, you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we actually, just before we started here, we did try all the different reflectors that we had with the D2 and uh, with the Pro Head, and then we were showing kind of the, the extremes, the most focused one and the That's most right. widest one. Exactly. And, so, and, and the difference was not big enough for us to not spend really. time on, on, on showing no. on both heads. Exactly. And, and so for convenience, we chose to uh, shoot with the Pro 10 and the Pro Head because yes. we have one, so it's really easy. And yeah. Uh, and if you're that nerdy, just go and rent something. Uh, you know, uh, if you have a yeah. flat front, go and rent a, a Pro Head or yeah. buy one uh, with a pack. Uh, or <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> and the great other way Christmas around present. Too. Exactly to yourself <laughs> <laughs> or me <laughs> or me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, so so you can always rent them if you yes. have a commercial shoot, yeah. and there there are there are advantages with the, with the Pro Ten and, yes. and, and and the Pro Heads clearly. But uh, we haven't done so much with the Pro Tens in in a long long while. I think mm -hmm. all of 2018 we didn't do like any productions or anything mm -hmm. with the, with the Pro Ten. So that's we kind of might be overusing it now on the yeah, live. I mean, the thing is that I use, you know, I use everything from mm. the A1 to uh, to the Pro 10 yeah. and everything in between. Yeah, and same here, I yeah. just came back from the castle yesterday and with me in the suitcase I had a D2 and a V1X yeah. and an A1. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I travel so with. The, yeah, <laughs> it is. It, 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 and it all works together, so yes, that's cool. It all works together. But today, you have one of the heroes. Exactly. Here. This so is, what is uh, this is the standard zoom reflector, and mm -hmm. we have the OCS uh, version as well, but we're not talking about that today. I would like There's to actually an episode of that. Exactly. Uh, if you go back in the video section in, in Facebook or on the YouTube channel, you'll find one with just OCF reflectors versus uh, regular. So yes, so, so watch that episode if you're interested in that. Yeah. Today, what I would like to focus on, in the beginning at least, mm. is the actual, this little diagram. Oh, you have to go, go, I'll, I'll go. I'll go closer, yeah. I'll get closer so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. So if you look here, you have a little diagram on the side of a standard zoom reflector. And um, what this diagram actually tells you, and most people don't really realize what it is, but uh, here you see that it says, um, I don't know if it's in focus, is it sharp? Uh, let me see if I get there. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. there. So here it says number six, and here it says number 10. Let's focus on those two extremes. And you see that there is a curve there, and there is more of a flat front of that curve. What that basically means is if you have, let's assume that you have three people, and you want to photograph them one next to, each other, to the other, if you put the zoom reflector on position six of the pro head, then two, the two people on the ends, on both ends of the person in the center, will be uh, overexposed. Um, so what you would have to do is to put it on position 10, because then all three people that are next to each other actually have the same exposure. That's basically what it means. It also means that with a zoom reflector, if you want to do a picture where you have two people in front, so let's assume the camera is here, basically, and, so, and the background is here. So you have the two people on the edges, on both edges of the picture, uh, closer to the camera, and the person in the middle of the picture further away from the camera, you can actually create this curve with, uh, with the light. So basically, you, you can change the shape of the light just thanks to Profoto's um, zoom function, which is unique to Profoto. And um, basically, what this tells you is that depending on the position of the, uh, the reflector on the flash head, you can actually have uh, a correct exposure as long as the people are along the line or curve of, um, of the actual light. Yeah, so you have the same exposure on that line. You exactly. have the same exposure, same amount of light that pops exactly. out on, on the person. So, I mean, if you assume that uh, we have the camera there, there's the two of us here, and assume then we have that one. there's another person and we have that person here, yeah. by putting it on position six, as I showed you before, that person is going to have exactly same. the same exposure as us. Yeah. If you bring that person closer to us, what will happen is that it's going to be overexposed. Yeah, exactly. And that's when you put it on... Position yes. 10, and then all is even. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So you and have so much flexibility. And this is only done with Profoto. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And 
so if you're working with multiple subjects, that's what it gives you, mm. is the, the possibility to actually use with just one light uh, exposure on uh, even exposure on three subjects that are in different places, and this you will see throughout the hard reflectors as well. Yeah, which okay, is yeah, because amazing. each each reflector has a different characteristic. Yes, yes. And 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 what you can also do if you're shooting, if it's an environment or a portrait, you can also play with that light. Yes, because you can use edges of it. Some of exactly. them have really wide uh, fall off area exactly. and others have really tight fall off area yeah. and because uh, I know you do that a lot. I do that a lot and if you're feathering the light as well, yeah. so if I have, instead of having the reflector, let's say that you are the subject, um, so instead of having it like this, you put it like this and you have it on position six, you will remember that that curve on position mm. six was very pointed like that, yeah. so you will have longer even exposure oh, yeah, by doing yeah, it this yeah. way. So, so then you have a long depth of exactly, light. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. So you can do all those things, so play with this. Because that's actually a very good feature, because the sun has a very long depth exactly, of light. Exactly, I mean, exactly. if you have one guy standing at one end of the football field and then the other one on the other one, they both yeah. get this equal yeah. amount of light, yeah. right? Yeah. And by feathering these, you get the same, you can kind get of same effect. effect exactly. Yeah. And as Anders said, you know, is that one reflector to the other, so you really look at them, and more looking at them, by looking at them you understand how they function, you actually understand the characteristic of light from each one, play with them, play with them, play with them. I just, uh, actually, I don't know if you saw it, but I published an article last week, or a few days ago actually, on uh, DIY photography, about how to be better at lighting, and I'm oh. talking a lot about this as well. Okay, no, so so I'm going to I'm gonna read that yes. article. <laughs> A lot of hello, Andreas. Here. Hello. A lot of people <laughs> saying hello. We got Spain, hello. India, Nigeria, oh, wonderful. Mexico, and wow. we have Portugal here as well, and Se Se Seattle. Seattle. Se is it no. Seattle or Se Seattle? Seattle. 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 Oh, Seattle. Uh, Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. 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 Colombia's in house <laughs> as well. And uh, of course, we have uh, our Swedish friends here as well. Hey. Nice to see <laughs> that. Albania. Oh, I Albania. Think. Wonderful. Awesome. Cool. That's really, really cool. And, uh, and then we're going to, I think we, what we really need to do is to uh, get started on shooting. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. So what I would like to uh, show you is a little bit on... Um, uh, how the actual zoom function works, and uh, and then we move on from that. Yeah. Because even we've spoken about um, uh, several subjects, so I want to show it to you on a diagram on the wall. Yeah. And this is important also f in another way of using it. Mm -hmm. If it's a single subject, then you will get a different characteristic of light. And we have one one question here: wide zoom reflector, especially in comparison with the Magnum. That will come, right? That is definitely coming. Are Tom? you reading our minds? Yeah, Tom, <laughs> that's going to be special for you. Yes. Uh, Turkey is in the house as well. Hello, awesome. Turkey. This is so cool. Great. Uh, let's get shooting. John, thank you. C at L. <laughs> Seattle. 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 Oh, but again, I'm Swedish and I apologize for my uh, English and uh, and I don't know where I'm from. And Germany. Annette in Germany. Hello. Let's uh, let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's jump over there and yes. uh, we have the the big camera. Well, let's see uh, cool. So, I will I'll start off by um, uh, let's have this uh, so that the actual reflector is flush on this line that we have as a measure. Yes, yeah, so we and have the same same distance on all different yeah. ones. And I want to actually start with position four, which is the most focused. Uh, and on I'll the pop up capture one for you, so that we actually can Thank sh you. show all the cool things that's going to happen. And I will shoot at the same um, exposure, so that we can actually compare everything. So I'll be a commentator here. Uh, so what we n uh, see now is Andrea going up and using a light meter. Uh, and this light meter is kind of uh, what TTL does for uh, you guys that use TTL. This is the, the old fashioned way of, of doing it uh, with a light meter. Because I'm an old fashioned guy. <laughs> <laughs> Since both me and Andrea are old people, we use it the old way. Exactly. And uh, uh, but it's it's also a, a simple way. And David oh. Henderson is asking if it's a zoom one or zoom two. These are the zoom two. These are the new zoom reflectors. Yes. Uh, so now you actually basically what happened now? You took so a picture. now I took a picture at position four. Uh, that is not on the diagram, but it is the most focused position of the zoom reflector. Okay, so 
Uh, I'll switch over to Capture One so that all the, our people see here what's yep. happening. So we see the light spread here. Yep. And I will now put it on position six just to see the difference between position four and position six. There we are. And I'll measure the light again because whenever you change the zoom position of a reflector, your exposure will change even if slightly. And here it's two tenths of an f-stop difference. Okay. So it's actually gone up two tenths. In there. So let's look at it now. So now it, it, it's a, a slight difference, a, a slightly larger area of fall off. Yep. No, not a big, big difference. Not a big difference between those two. But, but then let's go to position number 10 and we see here already, can you see it on the, on the nah, screen? It's, it, since we have so much ambient we light. We have so much ambient light. But do this when you actually have it in front of you, in your hands rather. And you go from a focused, very focused type of light to a very diffused kind of light. Yeah. And uh, so we hold on. Uh, we yes. just got a question from Mike here. Uh, yes. Will be interesting if Andrea show us uh, how to use the hard reflector with the flat front flashes. We all doesn't, uh, don't have uh, pro heads. Well, we actually talked about that, Mike, uh, in the beginning. In the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, and there is uh, not much of a difference. You have a slightly shorter area where you can zoom. So uh, you can't zoom all the way to ten. It's zooming to eight on the. Uh, on on the uh, on the flat fronts because it already has a built-in reflector uh, in the flat front. So, but if you look at the light image, you won't see that much of a difference. So, so all everything you will see here will play out more or less the same, uh, unless you're in a very very detailed mood. But we, yes, we did the comparison with the uh, flat front, we decided to take out because the, the the difference was not big enough. So so. Yes, and it's a tiny, tiny difference. Rodney is asking with cam what camera he's shooting with. Oh, but the camera doesn't matter. No, really. it's the light it's that matters. It's the light that matters. But <laughs> if you want to know, normally he, uh, Andrea, you shoot a lot with the, with the Phase I 1. I shoot with the Phase 1 camera normally, uh, yeah. Phase 1 XF. And uh, today, for, uh, just for ease uh, in showing these things, then uh, we chose to actually shoot with a, with a Canon. Yeah. Yeah, but, but normally, you, and you're using the, the trichromatic. The trichromatic, which is beautiful. Yeah, uh, the colors. The are colors are absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but right now, it's, it's a, 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 a Canon 5D Mark III. III. That's right. Yeah, with a 2470 yes. lens. Yes. Uh, good to go, sorry. But if you, if you get on to that comparison, that would be uh, great. It says, Tom, what comparison was that? Between the flat fronts and the pro heads, I think, that Tom meant. Uh, no, that's what? the question around... Mm, so many questions in here. So... Uh, Tom, if you could write that question again, that would help yeah, us a lot. Yeah, comparison with what? Yes. Uh, so here we see now uh, an image of the... Uh, Zoom reflector at position 10, so it's the widest one. Exactly. And uh, if we compare it to the previous one, we see that it's a massive difference. So we can actually put them together on the screen. Uh, just but this, come on. Yeah, there you go. So it's a big, big difference. And you see also here that the light on the position 6 is much more focused, even if you were just using on a single subject. You see that the intensity of the subject on the hotspot is much more intense than on the position 10, that it's much more diffused. And we're not talking about soft light, I'm talking about diffused light. Yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. And Mike says, once he tried the, the D2 with the dome, didn't get a, a, a different result. No, no exactly. No. So that's exactly no. why, even if you're with a dome or not with a dome and yeah. uh, flat front or pro head, there is not much of a difference. It's, no. it's only uh, the, the, the zoom. The, what I see is that the zoom function, the zoom function goes from 4 to 8 instead of from 4 to 10 on the flat yeah. fronts. Yeah. And uh, I, as I said in the beginning of this call, I use all of them and it depends what I need them for. Yeah. So of course, if I'm shooting outdoors, I'm not going to bring my Pro 10. Uh, I might do sometimes, but, <laughs> but that's just me. But I prefer actually traveling and uh, shooting with my B1X. And yeah. if I'm traveling, if I'm doing indoor location uh, outside of my studio, then the G2 is fantastic. If I'm yeah. in the studio, the Pro 10 is fantastic. They all have their own segments, basically, yeah. for me. 
Uh, Andrew has a quick question. Which reflector would be best to use on the B2 for placing close to ceilings to bounce light downwards off the ceiling when doing real estate shots? I, I would say the, the OCF Magnum. Well, it depends what you want. No, but I mean, if, um, if I'm thinking, I think what he wants, first of all, I mean, what will happen? He needs to have, a, a B2 is a 250 watt second yeah. flash, so you need a little bit more power. If you yeah. put the OCF Magnum on, you, you get 2x, so you're up at 500, you're up at 1000 watt yes. uh, seconds. And if you fire that up in the wall, you'll have plenty of light to get, kind of get general ambient light. Yeah, but again, if, you, if you're doing real estate with a, white, with a big room and you actually want to spread the light even more... Then no then reflector is better. No reflector, yeah. or if you want to add power, get a wide zoom reflector because it will increase your power and spread it out as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so it depends really what you want, and that's why I'm not so keen on giving like these quick recipes because it really, really is very individual. You have to look at the character of light and what you're actually trying to achieve. Yeah, and and, and, and I would actually say if you if you want just in general a lot of ambient light. Yeah. Uh, I would use the reflector that's already built in the B2. Yes, it's fabulous. It's it is it gives yes. you a fabulous light yeah. and, and it, it will spread out. Yeah. And, and then you will get a lot of, and if you feel that it's not enough power. Add the Magnum. The, and then you add the OCF Magnum. It's yeah. small and it's easy to carry with you. That's right. Uh, the wide zoom is also good, but it, it's bulkier, it's bigger. It's bulkier, so yeah. it really depends on what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. So the answer is basically no answer. We gave you all the options. We gave you depending all the options. On what and there are more, <laughs> there are more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have, uh, we've looked at the, uh, go back to this one here, um, the zoom reflector, right? Yes. Shall so, we go so over to the other uh, yeah, hard reflectors? Because there are, there's this little family that, you know, I created like a, a while ago. Yeah. And it's, it's not an official preferred family, but I like this family because yeah. they actually play well together. And um, what I would like to show you is... Uh, mm. You have a camera over there as well. I have a camera over here, perfect. So yeah, if you want to show them. So now we use the zoom and let's go over to Magnum. We're going over to this little family, which is the Magnum. Look how it is on the inside. Can you oh, see? You can it? go even closer. Okay, I go even closer. So this is how it's, what it looks like on the inside. Even closer. Even closer? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Isn't it beautiful? That's, <laughs> right. see all so the like dimples. That. And it's got this shape. And I want to show it to you to the, compare it to the next one, which is the wide zoom reflector. And you might think that they're quite similar, but already in the shape, you see that they're not. And if you look on the inside, they are completely different. So this is the wide zoom. This is the magnum. And then we... Oh, we'll go a little bit slower between oh, those two. Sorry, 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 sorry. So this is the magnum. And you see yeah, how it's got all that dimples. hammered inside. And it's like ti tiny little mirrors hundreds of them, maybe even thousands of them, they play with each other and they bounce the light in between the, in, inside the reflector and push this really nice characteristic from the man, which is really simulating sunlight. Okay, and, and now the... And then we have the wide zoom reflector. Which is a little bit more polished. More polished. Yep. So, and the light from the wide zoom reflector is very, very even and very wide. Yeah. So that's the main difference between the two. In the same family, we also have something that, if we compare just to one of them, you see how much bigger it is, how much longer it is. And this is the telezoom reflector. And when we look inside the telezoom, and you see, compare it to the wide zoom reflector, to the telezoom. And you see, even here, it's yet another um, surface. Yeah. Okay, and what this will do is it will focus the light much, much more. If you're, um, in terms of usage, uh, as I just said, I don't want to, you know, really dictate or say, you know, for this light you have to use this reflector or this light shaping tool. Uh, for me, it doesn't really work like that. You have to be in the question of what actually will create the most for that particular shot. But in general terms, and you have to get to know your light shaping tools in terms of the characteristics of light. And the characteristics, as I said, of the Magnum is to create sunlight effect. Because now you compared all the, all the three ones, but you missed out the one that we've been getting a lot of questions on, the narrow beam. Reflection. The narrow beam, I will take it on its own in a minute because I don't actually put it in this family because yeah. it's got another okay. characteristic of light. Okay. So hold tight for the narrow beam because it is one of my 
are the big favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, then let's take a look at the Magnum. So uh, let's take a look at the Magnum and see how it actually works. And uh, what I was saying was that, uh, you know, if you're trying to create something that is similar to sunlight, the, the, the actual character of light of sunlight, then the Magnum is the one. And it will give you one and a half f-stops more power uh, on a head than a zoom reflector. And uh, let's go, and this is quite different, so I want to show it to you talking about the zoom position. Uh, if you go on position four, we have something that is quite diffused. So and, 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 and when you say diffused, versus soft light. Soft light is a basically the, the size of the light source? No, not really. Uh, hard light can be diffused. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, yeah, but hard, hard or soft light yeah. is the size of the light source no. decides no. it. You know, but oh, the, the yeah. actual light source, yes. Exactly. Sorry, yes. So if you yes. have a small light yes. source, it will be hard, but yes. that small light source can be diffused. Exactly, yes. exactly. You so, can so have a hard light that is diffused, yeah. you can have a soft light that is focused. Exactly. If we so look that's at why a soft box, exactly. clear out the, 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 the terms. The misunderstanding Hard the terms. and soft is, is one thing, and not to be mixed with diffused, which is a whole different exactly. thing. Exactly, or focused. Exactly. So we have hard and, and soft, focused, diffused. Exactly. And, and, and diffused is basically, for example, if you shoot into a, a uh, softbox and it hits the white diffusion paper, exactly. then it spreads all over in all directions. Exactly. So, and so you see it on the shadows. If you have a mm. hard light that is um, diffused, the shadows are still going to be hard, mm. but not as sharp. Yeah. That's basically it. Exactly. And in soft light, the shadows will start actually disappearing. Yeah. Cool. So, but there's also another episode on yes. diffusion. And in, in that, if you look at it, uh, after that, the word uh, diffusion, uh, in the videos, you will, we will go through in depth a whole hour about diffusion. Uh, so John had a question about that. Uh, so, so there is an episode on diffusion and how that works. But soft and hard is just the size of the light source. That's right. So um, now what I'm doing is I'm showing three different zoom positions of the Magnum because what, uh, what happens here is that um, the Magnum behaves differently than the zoom reflector. The zoom reflector, we saw that for uh, position four, you had the most focused light. And the more you went towards position 10, the wider it was getting, the more diffused it was getting as well. The Magnum uh, works in a completely different way. So it starts Let's off diffused and wide. Then you go towards the center of the zoom position and it gets more and more focused. And the more you go towards 10 after that point, then you go diffused again and wide again. So let's grab a couple of shots. Let's grab a couple uh, of shots. The, this is with the two position. extremes on this yep. one. Yeah, so we have So that we have time for the narrow one, narrow beam, because that's the really the... Yes. So this is at position four. I'll just run quickly oh my through God. this. That was really... Uh, zoomed in. That, I, that surprised me. I've well, about wait for it. Yeah. This is at position seven, which is actually the most focused. There. And. Uh, how is that compared to the and last here one? Comes, yeah, that's even more focused. Even more focused. Yeah. And I'll just go quickly to position 10. We'll see that it's going more diffused and wider again compared to the last one. But it's not quite the same as the first one that we did. And as you can see, Andrea is using one uh, air remote and you're just, uh, hitting the test button when you're measuring. That's right. The, yeah. So I'm actually, in order to get the same exposure between all of them. Yeah. So here now you see, here we see the, the image is, it, it's still focused, and, but it's wider than when it is at the most focused position like this one. That's right. And if we compare the first diffused and the last diffused, then we see that it's two completely different things, although they are diffused, both of them. Yeah. And, and so clearly here you can see how concentrated it is both on its most focused area and the, the most 
or the, the wider area and the most focused area, uh, it's, it really collects all the light into that middle point. So this is perfect when That's you're right. standing far away and you need to fire off the That's right. light uh, on a further distance. Um, do you want me to uh, show the wide zoom reflector now? Or, 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 yes. or do the telezoom. Let's look at the telezoom. Yeah. That's cool. And the telezoom gives you two f-stops more of power. And I don't need to so back out a little because it's so long. It's very long, so <laughs> I can actually back out. So let's put it there. <laughs> And uh, so I'm actually going to show you the most focused position, which in this case is position four. And there we go. Uh, Saprit Singh is like, how to get sharp shadows on the reflector by putting the diffuser on the reflector. No, so, no. so here's one thing that really uh, upsets me, because you see a lot of people putting diffusion paper on, uh, on these hard reflectors, make, thinking that they make them soft. <laughs> and, and the only thing that happens is that um, instead of having a focused light where you get you know, a lot of contrast and you get uh, uh, all the light focus going forward like you see now here on the telezoom, you have a very, very nice light image uh, with a, a, a little bit of fall off here but, and then a fairly sharp edge here and it goes into total darkness here. But if you put the diffusion in front of this one, Maybe we should do that. Yeah, do we have? Oh, I, have I have diffusion you paper. Okay, cool. So if you, uh, you are on, on, on camera one, yes. or, or the camera two, yes. do a dance show and I'll bring out the... A dance show? Oh, yes, something fun. He wants me to do a dance show. <laughs> I don't dance, guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, diffusion, the, there's one thing that we talk about with diffusion is that Profoto has a thing called the grid and filter holder. And the grid and filter holder, what it does is when you're actually using grid, so it's another discussion, just you, losing, wasting time here so Anish can get the diffusing paper. <laughs> but that really shows you how the placement of a diffuser in front or behind of a grid is actually spreading the light or focusing the light. And it's a little bit the same discussion of what we're trying to show now. By placing a diffuser there and you actually see it there, if Anders can actually hold that for me, I will take a quick light test. There. Already we lose a lot of yeah. power. So almost okay. two f stops actually. And take an image of this. Oh, of, of this I'll one. take Let's an see. image of this. So we haven't changed the zoom <coughs> position at all. No. So the only thing we put... Uh, so apart from losing two f-stops of power, let's compare it to the first one. So this is the difference. You get much, much wider. So you lose the effect of the zoom. I mean, you yeah. buy a telezoom and, and then... You do something else exactly. with it. Exactly. And it's not wrong. But no, be aware no, 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 of no. What, it, what you're actually doing. Exactly. It is, absolutely. There's no right or wrong. No. It's just all about what, what do you want. Yes. So having gone from that, having looked at the telezoom, I would like to talk about the... So you lost power. Writing. You lost 2F stop and spread the light even more. So you lost the actual base characteristics of the, of the oh, telezoom yeah. reflector. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then uh, also, uh, I'm trying to think, and, and two f-stops, that's quite a lot, especially it's if you're working with a, with a battery-driven. Oh, well, yes, yes. It's a hell of a lot of power you lose. And, and, and Basically, the, the, the those battery. two f-stops that you would win by using the telezoom reflector, you're actually losing by just putting a piece of tracing paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and, the, and you run out of batteries faster. Totally, totally. So what I would like to show you now is the actual wide zoom reflector. And it behaves, in terms of zoom function, it behaves very similarly to the uh, standard zoom reflector. So basically, the more you're on position four of the flash head, regardless if it's uh, a pro head or a flat front, then the more focused it will be, and the more you bring it towards position 10 or 8 on the flat fronts, the more wide it will be and the more even as well it will be on uh, on your subject or your background. Oh, wait a minute. I, I think yes. they, they didn't see the results on the telezoom. Ah, okay. So, so I'll show it again. So, this one was the magnum as it, when it was zoomed out, and here's the telezoom. That's right. Uh, and was this at the most focused point? Yes, it was. Yeah. So this is really focusing in, and you get a very, very sharp line when you have 
the kind of the light spot here, and then it's a short uh, fall off, and yeah. then it's a very very sharp line Pitch almost black. into the darkness. So yes. it's really focusing that light. It's really like a spotlight. Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly like yeah. a spotlight. Very so good comparison. And and then we we, we had the question from Saprit Yasprit uh, about the, the diffusion, and it basically ruins now. So you you, you lost the whole sharp edge here. Now it's all a long, 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 long gradient here with the fall off. That's right. And um, uh, so you lost the effect of the spotlight effect of the telezoom. Yeah. So there we go. And then we had one question regarding uh, the Pro 8 and Pro 10, the, uh, the difference there uh, is, is the um, HSS and TTL that you have with the, with, the, with, uh, the with the Pro 10. And then also the flash duration. Yeah. It's and it's, uh, it's quite a bit faster as well. It's, yeah, it's a lot faster, yeah. crazy fast. Yes. And, and then you and have... Super a, stable. It's yeah, uh, and the flash duration is okay. down, down at 180,000 of a second. Which is incredible. Which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I talk about the wide zoom reflector? Yes, you it's, may. That's a, it's a wonderful thing. I really want to, to share this information with you. And the, I actually started using this beautiful, beautiful hard reflector. I really love it a lot, but I started using, I started, I wouldn't say misusing it, but I started not using it to its full potential. So I started using it on backgrounds because if you want to do a very even white background, for instance, in the studio, the classical way to do it is to have two umbrellas on one side and two umbrellas on the other side. Now, if you just place one wide zoom reflector on a boom stand, maybe above your model, your subject towards the background, you get an even wider light spread um, and much more even than the four umbrellas. Uh, so you eliminate three of the flash heads and have a better result. Uh, that's pro photo for you. <laughs> and um, if you don't want to use the boom stand, then you just put one on one side and one on the other, and you're still saving two flash heads. So it's, uh, it's just, there's, it doesn't make sense not using it, basically. Yeah. Until one day, I was like, why don't I try? And this, I was, at that point, I was still scared of hard light. Okay, so I would just use it on the background, not daring to use it on the subject. So all of a sudden, I actually decided to start using it on the subject and, sh and seeing how it actually works. And it's absolutely amazing. And also, you have this information, and that's really where I want, to, want you to get to, is to get to know the light shaping tools so well that you know them like your best friends, so you can you know, talk to one or the other and get them to contribute to your pictures uh, in real freedom if you really know them well, and, um, and pick one or the other. And so once I know the basic characteristics, for instance, of the wide zoom reflector, that they are very wide and very even, what happens when you actually bring it a lot closer to your subject or start feathering it or, and start zooming it? So many more things can be created that it's absolutely amazing. So don't get stuck with the basic characteristics. Those are just definitions so that you get to know them. And you also have to know that every reflector, every light shaping tool in general, changes with distance, light, and the actual shape of the reflector. So play with those things and explore them. That's really when you get to know them. Uh, the first getting to know the, uh, the base characteristics is just like, hi, my name is, and I live in, and I speak these languages. That's it, uh, which is great. It's a lot of information, but you also want to know what they go for, what they can contribute to you, what can contribute to the pictures, and how you can use them outside of the f definitions and set rules of how to use them. For instance, a beauty dish for a portrait or a beauty picture and create something different. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to share. Yeah. <laughs> God, I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and also what I know you, you mentioned quite often is that uh, these are uh, hot reflectors are dead cheap to rent yes in most yes. places of the world yes when you're out there uh, rent one and try it and you absolutely you'll find and play with them yeah I had I've, I've told this story many times before but there was this uh, this uh, colleague in uh, in Korea actually and uh, and it was brilliant what he does a commercial photographer what he does is that every shoot that he has he actually rents one light shaping tool that he's never used before now 
the rental, like Anders said, the rental of a light shaping tool is super cheap. So he puts that in charge of his clients. They don't even notice the cost. And in, in fact, they're actually getting a lot of benefit from it because they actually get different pictures and whatever. And what he gets from that, he gets to know a new light shaping tool in a real working situation at no cost whatsoever. So do you dare be that cheeky with your clients? I would. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got wide soup and now you have it and... Uh, uh, position 10, so position the widest and widest. the most diffuse. And let's see what it gives us. And as I said, I used to use this only on backgrounds and now I use it so with whatever. Over. Yep. Yeah, very nice wide image. Nice and wide. If we compare it to you know anything we've done so far, yeah, it's very very wide. And and now oh, just an explanation is that we are shooting at f sixteen. Yeah. And that's mainly because if if we go down to maybe f eight, f nine, where you most lenses have their best sharpness, you 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 kind of lose out on on seeing the actual light image. You don't that's see it right. properly. So now we're really we're pushing the system really to force it to show you the differences on this one. So if you would if you would go, go down to f8, for example, this is really I mean it's it's so wide, it's, it's really crazy. Wide. Yes. It's really nice. Yes. So that's a really nice one. And and I think uh, so that was the wide zoom at position ten. Yes. So I think now it's time uh, I've got a couple of questions here while you set up and prepare for the narrow beam. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I get to play with that? Yes. Good. <laughs> uh, we had a question here about the uh, uh, wireless triggers uh, uh, for uh, meters. Well, I, I don't know of any uh, built-in like Seconic that can automatically trigger Profoto systems as we have different channels and so forth. That's uh, right. I haven't seen that. I know the, the Phase 1 camera has one, so you can yes. buy a Phase 1 camera. Yeah, and then That's you get it. it. <laughs> it's an easy solution. <laughs> it's an easy solution, <laughs> but not so smart. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, so there's not like, uh, uh, like I know Pocket Wizard have some solution for it, but uh, we solve it. I mean, either, either we, we just trigger it with the, with the remote, that's, that's one way of, of doing it. Yes. Or you just use the TTL. Yes. So, I so mean, the TTL is great. Mm. Uh, the TTL is very reliable. And uh, do people see me if I come here? Uh, yeah. Yes, cool. So <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Andre. Hello. <laughs> so the TTL is very reliable uh, and it's spot on. W the reason why I use, I tend to use the flash meter very often is because I am actually talking about specifics of light. And yeah. to show you that, I really want to is spot meter is not enough for me. I want to go one step further and really be totally precise that on that particular spot, that dot, I have exactly the same exposure when I'm talking about light. Yeah, then now since we're going to show you, uh, exactly. since we're showing different light images, we want to make sure that yeah. it's exactly the same. And, exactly. and don't, sometimes TTL is it measured from corner to corner. Exactly. You can, can get different readings and then you would see different yeah. variations on, on the wall. And, and Again, it's one of those things that, you know, people ask me TTL or flash meter. I say use both. Yeah. Uh, depending on the situation, use both. If you're in a rush and if you're outdoors or if you're in a situation where you don't have a super black or super white background that is very wide behind your subject, then go for TTL. It's easy. Why, yeah. why you know, waste time? And uh, if you are working more precise situations like m maybe very narrow, spotted, multiple lighting setups like I do very often, then a flash meter is the only way to go. Yeah. Uh, so it has, you know, both have advantages and, and not. And then we had a question, if you choose a hard reflector, why, why would you, someone put a diffuser in front? Uh, you've chosen a hard light in the first place. Well, this is, comes back to the question about it, the hardness of the light stays the same. So it, it, the penumbra is equally bright, uh, wide when you use a uh, diffusion on it. The difference is that with the diffusion, you get light on, if you, for example, if you're in a small room, you will get light bouncing off the walls and you, you lower the contrast in the image on the shadows. So the shadows will be equally sharp and hard, but the darkness will not be as dark. That's what basically happens. So it's very common in fashion, right? Yes, so it's in very fashion, common in fashion. Right? Everybody puts uh, diffusion on every single... Well, it de again, it depends. I mean, yeah. the, the thing, the trends in fashion change even it, it with does. lighting. Yes. So, you yes, know, yes. you go through trends where, uh, when I started, for instance, uh, working in fashion, 40 years ago, uh, then it was soft light. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, today, when I think about it, it's actually kind of crazy because, I mean, it doesn't, a lot of the clients actually want to see the thread 
of the clothes and yeah. the details, and uh, you don't get that with a soft light. Yeah, so no. that's when you know hard light came back in. You start seeing the Fresnels, you start seeing the yeah, hard boxes, yeah, and all exactly. these things. And then you know the yeah. diffusers come in from time to time. Yeah. So it's trends. But but it, I would but say also it's also quite often uh, abuse that people just put it on because. Yes, be, just yes, because, because everybody does it. Uh, yeah, Instead of being exactly. in the question with every single light, every yeah. single shot, yeah. do I need this? Do now I want this? Now you narrow beam. I narrow beam get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show you this thing. I had when <laughs> I, <laughs> and when I started and this collaboration with... Be quickly before you do that, congratulations, David. Uh, he just bought two D2s, 500s, and is very, very happy with them. And yes, and if you, if you run into any questions, David, yes, you know where to answer, uh, ask them and we will answer them. Exactly. Okay, so, so now, now, Andrea, again, beam. sorry to insist. Can you show a trick when using the narrow beam reflector? I tried and I tried and I didn't get it yet. What trick? Uh, just any trick. Any trick. What, what, what's, what's the whole deal with narrow beam? Narrow now beam it's is narrow amazing. Beam. Okay, let me talk to you about the narrow beam. Yeah. First of all, when we I... We get a hell yeah for narrow beam right now. Hell yeah, <laughs> I love this. Um, so the narrow beam, basically, I had one question to Profoto, to the people in the R&D department here. And the first question was, why do you call it narrow beam when so obviously the light spread is really wide? And they looked at me like I was an idiot. Because I was asking, actually... Look in there. Sorry, Don't look I, at me. I, 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 I know you. Okay, he knows me. He knows me. I don't know <laughs> yeah. you. I know you too. That's so, me. <laughs> and the, the answer was already my question. The light spread of the narrow beam is very wide, but the actual light beam is very narrow. Now, the difference between light spread and light beam, have you covered that, Anders, already? Uh, no. Okay, so the light beam is actually the, the focus point of the light uh, so you have the light spread, which is all the light that comes from your light shaping tool. Um, then you have the light beam that is the actual hot spot. A lot of people call it the hot spot. And you see that the, the narrow beam is from the center, the very center point. And when you take a flash meter, like the one that I use, and you measure the light from the center going outward, as soon as you lose one f-stop from the center, that's the edge of your beam of light, of your light beam. The rest is spill light. Okay, so you have the light beam, the spill light that is outside the light beam, and all of it is the light spread. I hope that uh, clears it. So the light beam is actually very, 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 very narrow with the narrow beam reflector. And uh, the zoom function with the narrow beam reflector is absolutely amazing. First of all, I'm going to show you how it works with the three different positions. So from position four to position in the middle, and that, I'm saying in the middle because it changes depending on the distance between the light and the subject all the time. So very often it goes anywhere from six to maybe seven and a half, eight-ish. Um, then it becomes really focused. And then towards position 10, it becomes wide and diffused again. Pretty much like the uh, magnum reflector. So let's look at it and play yep. with it. So here we start with a picture at position four. Am I, I can go a little bit quicker. Yeah, there right. Yeah. Cool. Diana asks, is, is, does the wide zoom put out the same amount of light as the magnum or just wider? Well, actually, it does not put out the same amount of light. It, it, is, it is wider. Yes. So, so uh, it's very, very focused on the, on the magnum. That. And we will switch over to capture one so I don't forget. There, so this is at position four. Oh, if you switch on your remote, <laughs> it actually works much better. <laughs> there we go. So do you get to see there that? There we go, yeah. Okay, so now let's take the next one at position focused. <laughs> and we see how, oh my God, you even see it with the modeling light. Super sharp. Uh, do that again, do that again. I think okay. you, you actually Can might... Can you see it? Yeah. From position four to position focused, which here is at eight almost and if i go towards 10 it's even more diffuse and you see just bef between eight and ten huge difference yeah so go for that one yeah that's where you that's really where i want it yeah. and i want to show you one thing look at that center point there when we're talking about narrow beam i'm just uh, moving the head just a couple of centimeters you see how off it is oh, you yeah, see how narrow yeah. it is yeah can you see it yeah 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 that's how narrow it is so you have to be very precise if you want that if you want to be in the actual light beam. 
and very powerful. So I've gone from F8 to F16.8. to the camera. That. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Right? <laughs> it's totally crazy. It's totally crazy. Look at the difference so, between those two. Yeah, so these two. So these are the two extremes of the... And there's one more. So let's go to position 10 and you will see that position 10 is again completely different to position 4. And what I love about the narrow beam is that it's so many different reflectors built into one. Yeah. And I will tell you about a trick in a minute, which <laughs> is really cool. For whoever it was, who was it that was asking for the trick? That uh, was Mike. Mike, I'll tell you that trick in just a few minutes. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. Compare those two. If we do Compare those two. Yes, and then that one. You see that it's three completely different Oh, lights. sorry. <laughs> I, I, I did my... forget to switch over to Capture One again. <laughs> so here we go. So basically, what um, the trick, Mike, is this. Is that what we have is actually several light shaping tools in one. So one of my tricks with the narrow beam reflector is that I can actually have two subjects, or more, but let's just take two subjects Let's take two people in the same picture, one with uh, a very focused light and the other one with a very diffused light. Okay, both are a hard light, but one with uh, focus and one diffused. So if we compare it to um, two of these images, we're going to get those two characteristics in the same picture. Well, the way that you have to do it is that you have, you have it on the most focused position. So in our case was, what was it, Anders? Position 8, right? Yes. Yeah. So you have it on position 8 of your probe Which head. is the upper right image for you that are looking at. Yeah. So if you have it on that position, then, um, and you have the person further away from the camera in that spotlight, and then you have another person that is closer to the camera, but that, uh, um, that is more towards the characteristic of light of one of the other two positions. And the way that you do it is with a flash meter in this case, because you have to measure your light on the focus point on your subject right in the beam of light, and then you find the same exposure along the line for your subject closer to the camera. And that's the trick. So two different light characteristics with one light shaping tool in the same frame. And you don't move the light, you don't change the position you don't of the, move the light. light. You don't change anything. The only thing you have to do is to move measure. Move the people, yeah, measure and, and move the people move and place the people them. Move the people and measure. Yeah. Yes. That so is So that's really the trick. Cool. And so I love this. I, yes. I just love this. So I'll, I'll switch over to the image now so you see the difference between the, the three. These are three uh, kind of extremes of the, of the narrow beam. Uh, reflector and we didn't move the light we didn't do anything we just basically uh, zoomed it that was all we did that's right mm. so that's really cool I, uh, thank you I mean this is this is the sad part is mm. that yes. that uh, one hour flies I know it's <laughs> terrible we should do but like 10 hours <laughs> yeah. 10 hour show and 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 uh, uh, but I think we've got a a, a a a kind of very fast overview I mean we could s talk about one hour yes. per light yes at least and at yeah. least I mean if you if you rent uh, the, the thing that I always recommend is uh, especially with what Anders was saying before rent one mm. for a whole day and play with it because there's so much you can get out of just one single light shaping tool just by this thing that is just pro photo you know the zoom function mm. and play with the zoom and play with moving it just a few centimeters away from your subject and then a lot further away and closer and angle grids no grids diffuser not diffuser and instead of waiting for us to give you those answers you really of course we tell you about it but the the best way to really learn it hands on with you yeah. You and the light. I mean, you know, if you are trying to uh, 
uh, get to know a best friend. Are you going to talk to somebody else about what they're like? Or are you actually going to start talking to this person and get to know them? Take yeah. them for dinner, to the movies. Very, very good comparison, very right. good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to say one more thing for all those people that uh, think that one like shape and talk can replace the other. Well, they can't. And that's why I'm so grateful for Prophoto for having so many light shaping tools and so many ways for us photographers to really paint with light and be precise, is that you can get close between one light shaping tool and the other sometimes, but if you go to a restaurant and you are going to a Michelin guide restaurant and prepare to pay a lot of money for good food, if they present you with a hamburger, you're going to be quite disappointed. So if you're a photographer and you're serving hamburgers of light, then don't complain if you're getting paid very little. If you want to yeah. be on the high end uh, scale, if you really want to be precise with light, use all the different light shaping tools because those are your differences. So we got a couple of questions. Road shows, yes. I mean, you are out and about. Uh, your your next trip about. is in, in I'm Dubai. I'm in Dubai, actually, for those of you that are in Dubai or not, because or there are in some the Dubai area. Or, or uh, even in Europe, because, I mean, there's photographers that uh, when we did this first event last year came mm -hmm. from the States yeah. to Sweden. So, oh, you know, yeah, and right. flights to Dubai are super cheap. With 300 euros, I think, or even less, you can come from anywhere in Europe to Dubai. Yeah. And right now in Europe, the weather kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so come to the warmth and yeah. uh, join me and my friends and colleagues. And uh, we have five days, and you can actually choose between three and five days. Mm -hmm. And since you're watching this, you actually have discount codes. Ooh. Yes. So um, we can, can we share this discount code somewhere? I can write it in uh, the Yeah, comment. you can write it in the I comments. I can write it in the comment below here somewhere. And I'll give you these kind of codes, but hurry up because it's limited spaces only, especially for the five days. It's limited to 12 people. We get to play with a lot of Profoto lights. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And everything from A1s to Pro 10s at your disposal with a team of hair, makeup, models, stylists that we're bringing our own from here. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So join yeah. us. Discount codes run out, spaces run out. And you hurry play up. with phase one cameras. And you play with phase one cameras. Mm. So you can choose three days, yeah. very cheap, with the discount codes especially, or the five days limited to 12 people only, and you get phase one cameras and tons of profit lighting. Does the 10 degree grid change the effect on all, uh, all positions? So if you're zooming, if you have a... a yes, the zoom does, position yeah. is a zoom position. All yeah. you're doing with the grid, you're adding the grid to the zoom function. That's yeah, basically so what it does change. Yes. Is it best to get the OCF version? Well, uh, Andrew, uh, it depends. If you have a flat front and you have an OCF alternative, normally it is better because they're optimized for the flat front because yes. they take into consideration the built-in reflector and yeah. builds on top of that. That's right. So, so if, you, if you're going to have the zoom, buy the OCF zoom. If you want to go for the magnum, buy the OCF magnum. Yeah. First of all, they're, they're smaller and they yeah, are really more and they are uh, more optimized. Yes. And I really need to, from Joel Ruiz here, tell Andrea I said hello. Hi, Joel. How are <laughs> you, my, my friend? friend. <laughs> Miss you. <laughs> and and um, so so uh, asking when when you come to India? You've been to India? No, I haven't. Actually. You haven't. It was cancelled the last minute last year. We are actually though <laughs> talking. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. This week, probably tomorrow, to yeah. our Indian partners. Oh, what, what dates is the Dubai thing? The Dubai, sorry, yes, of course. It starts on Thank the you, Jeffrey. Thank you. <laughs> From the 27th to the 31st of March. So it's actually starting in exactly one week's time. So if you want some of those few spaces left, you register now, guys. And <laughs> <laughs> so I will post the link to all this down below. Uh, it's thecreativeexperience.net. And uh, I'll write down the discount codes just for you guys. Yeah. And what's a good starter set of mm -hmm. reflectors? Well, I, this is coming from David, who just bought the two D2s. I would say an OCF Zoom and an OCF yeah. Magnum is, is yes, a really a good, start. good starter. And, and, then and the, the beauty dishes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the beauty. Then, yeah. if you have those three things, you have one beauty dish, up to you which one you choose, okay? Yeah. Well, that's another discussion. So, the white or the silver beauty dish, the OCF Magnum, and the OCF um, Zoom. Zoom. Uh, then you are, you're set to do a lot of stuff. If I can only choose two Pro Photo Reflectors, will, will it be the, the Magnum and, uh, and the Umbrella Deep Silver? If I choose, well, so that, that there's one guy saying that if he would only choose two, he would choose Magnum and the Umbrella Deep Silver. So that that's his preference, and that's, that's your preference. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay, and, cool. and and uh, yeah, I mean, I like the Magnum, and I like the 
I like the, the deep silver as well. I like all of them. Yeah, exactly. That's so difficult because <laughs> depending on what you want to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I also, guys, one thing that I always say, and I will repeat it, and I'll keep on repeating it, is please, 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 never, ever, ever get stuck into one light shaping tool or two or even three. <laughs> but really expand around, your views yeah. and play around and don't get stuck and don't try, try not to define yourself as a photographer too much because then you're limiting yourself. I did that. It resulted in me getting super bored about my own photography yeah. that I stopped shooting for five or six years completely. I did not want to take one single picture. Yeah. Seriously, do not do that. Vary yourself, explore, experiment. That's what lighting is about. Yeah. And then we got a question about the dome. Yeah, there, there, there is uh, on, the, on the D2s and the B1s, there's a, there's a small difference, but it's, it's, uh, I think it's more of a sugar pill. Uh, yeah. if, you, if it feels good yeah. and you it feels like you're taking better pictures, use exactly. the dome. If it doesn't, well, don't. Uh, exactly. Because it, it really, it's, uh, it's, it's not a, a massive measurable result. Like, I mean, no. if you saw the, with the, with the narrow beam here, where you had to see the, the three different light images, massive differences in the light yeah. image, right? So, so here, yes, this yes. makes a difference, but with the dome, you will not see the similar. No, I mean, if I, you know, that talk about these tiny differences that actually yeah. make a Michelin Guide Chef and a McDonald's, you know, it, the, because the, I'm talking about that because the Michelin Guide Chef will actually taste the difference in between yeah. one pinch or one and a half pinch of salt or, or even spice or, or even whatever. two different types of salt. Exactly. Two different types of salt. salt yeah. So which salt should exactly. I use? So it's, that chef yeah. will know. And that's what you should become yeah. really seriously if you want to charge your client more because then you're really worth it. Yeah. You know, your pictures are really worth it then. Yeah. But if even for us, that difference, you can do a lot of you can do a lot of cooking before you are at the uh, Michelin level of, yes. of chef. I mean, there's so yes. much fun to do and so there much cooking to do. There is a lot of do. fun and cooking to yeah. do and just carry on playing and exactly. explore and experiment. Never get stuck. Never, ever, ever get stuck. Uh, yeah, and I think that's also the purpose of here with these sessions is to give you a little bit of a flavor yeah. of what you can do and what you can play, that all the, see the differences, get a little bit of inspiration from yeah. people like Andrea. Uh, and if you want to know more details, there are the classes on Pro Photo Academy. Yes. There you get all the ins and outs and you can play around and there's some exercises, etc. cetera. So, exactly. so really go and test those. But then I think the, one of the key messages that I know you always say and I always say is again play tr I mean there's no right and wrong no play no. and try well, if it feels good and it, it feels like this is a, this is the image you want to take you take it yes right there and, and, there. and if right it feels and wrong and it's ugly and you don't like it don't take it exactly and, and it, it's that simple you make the rules yeah. of your own pictures every time you take a picture and those those rules should not be rules. Yeah. They should be just be in that particular second. Like David says, practice, practice, practice. Yeah, 10,000 yeah. uh, 10, hours. Have fun, have fun, have <laughs> exactly. fun, have fun. If you don't have fun, you're not going to create it. Yeah, and, and then again, the more you limit yourself, the more boring, if faster it will get boring. Yeah, totally. But if, if this is not, I mean, in a professional as a photographer is not a normal job. It's actually your passion turned into money yeah. and into fun. Yeah. If you take away any of those things, and it's, and it's not about how many lights you have. No. I mean, because there's so many things I realize I do, I just use one light. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I mean, you can do so much with yes. one light and, and a piece of cardboard or a yeah. reflector or, or if you need a little bit more. Exactly. And, and you can be so creative with one yeah. light. And the, the whole thing, and this is very important because a lot of you guys actually buy into competing with one another and you believe that there is competition among photographers. Well, guess what? There isn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the, the whole thing about getting away from this lie that is competition among photographers is that you are unique. Yeah. I can't compete with you, you can't compete with me, we can't compete with Different each other. Styles. We are completely unique. Is, is Monet people. competing with Picasso? <laughs> right. I, I mean, Maybe in a, how much the, the one <laughs> drunk or the other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for being with us. Yes. We love talking to you guys and we would do this for hours and hours. And, Absolutely. And Andrea and I, we're going to continue talking about we're gonna this. We're going to carry on. <laughs> but we're going to shut this off here yes. and, and let you guys continue with your lives. If you want to uh, carry on, <laughs> join me in Dubai next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much, for, you so much. for listening. And Anders, we, thank we you will, so much. And thank you, Andrea, for always thank being you. so inspirational. And Such a pleasure. The only problem with you is that time is not enough. I but, know. Yeah. But you will go in there and you will, I know you're really good at social media and you answer I'll questions. I'll be answering, and, so yeah. ask away, ask and away. And you'll put in some uh, discount code.
modes and timings exactly. and all that. Exactly. So. I'll do all Awesomeness. That. Wonderful. And see you again soon here on yes. Academy Live. He'll be back. I'll be back. Yes. yes. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>